Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. See all these notes here? I'm going to be using those to help me explain to you how to do Y to delta conversions. And, and where these come into play is, is oftentimes in an electric circuit, you may find that your resistors are not in a series combination, they're not in a parallel combination, they're not in a series parallel combination. And, and you need to do something to be able to figure out the circuit. Now you can always use the mesh analysis or nodal analysis to figure out all your voltages and currents, but those are often a little bit complicated and there's a, some system of, of linear equations that you need to solve. Now with the delta Y and the Y delta conversions, you can take different shapes in the circuit and convert them from one form to another. And these can really help you in, in, in converting the circuit into a, a series or parallel or series parallel combination that you can use your standard tools to, to address and, and, and solve. So and you may come across a part of your circuit that looks something like this. This is the Y configuration. And you can see why it's called the Y configuration. It's, it's the shape of a Y. And let's call these nodes X, Y, and Z. And the tools we're gonna to use today are going to allow us to convert that circuit into a circuit or a portion of a circuit that's shaped like this. And this is the delta configuration, although it's upside down delta. And the reason that I drew it upside down is so that my so that my nodes can match. And I may have drawn these out of view. I'm just gonna bring them down here. So that's X and that's Y node, X, Y, and Z. And, and what we're assuming is that we have this configuration, the Y configuration, and we know the values of these resistors. Let's just label them R, D, R, E, and RF, and we need to figure out the values of these resistors that give us the equivalent circuit. And these resistors, we're going to call them RA, RB, and RC. And, and let's, let's start off with just looking at, at how these two circuits can be equivalent. And what we're going to do is, is look at re the resistances between X and Y in this circuit, X, Y in this circuit, X and Z, X and Z, and Y and Z, and Y and Z, and in, in just in the, in, the two, in the two different circuits and, and come up with uh, an equation for the resistances for each one of those circuits. And then if we set those equations equal to each other, then we're going to have equivalent circuits. So if I'm going back to the X, Y, if, if I have an ohmmeter and I connect it between X and Y, I will get some resistance. And that resistance is going to be based on R, D, and R, E. It's just a series combination of those two. R, F is connected off somewhere else. We are assuming that it's floating for, 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 for this analysis purposes. So that RXY is simply RD plus RE. But on the delta configuration, that XY is going to be RA in parallel with RB plus RC. And in order for these two circuits to be equivalent, those two values need to be equal. We also need the XZ resistances to be equal. Over here in the Y configuration, the resistance between X and Z is simply RD plus RF. But over here in the XZ, it's going to be RB in parallel with RA plus RC. And then finally, that resistance between Y and Z. In the Y configuration, it's just RE plus RF. And in the delta configuration, it's RC in parallel to RA plus RB. As long as these three expressions are true, then these two circuits are going to be equivalent. And remember, we're starting with this circuit, so we know those three values, but we don't know these three values. So there's three values here that we need to figure out. And, and look at that, we've got three equations, three unknowns here, three equations relating those unknowns to, to the values that we do know. 
And so what this means is we can, if we solve the system of equations, we can figure out, we can come up with an equation for Ra, an equation for Rb, and an equation for Rc. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm not going to start from scratch. I'm going to start from where I was with my delta to y conversion video, and you can check out the link either here or here. I don't know actually where it's going to where it's going to show up. I just had to fix the camera. I think it was bumped, so it wasn't actually showing the full screen. Okay, right, so so from that from that video. I came up with equations for RD and RE and RF, and, and RD is RA, RB over RA plus RB plus RC. RE So those, those are my three equations from the delta to y conversions. Now what I want to do is figure out expressions for RA in terms of R, D, E, and F, for RB in terms of R, D, E, e and F, and RC for in terms of R, D, E, and F. And, and there's, you'll have to bear with me, there's a fair amount of algebra that I'm going to go through, uh, but, but in the end hopefully it'll all be worth it when you get equations for your R, A, R, B, and R, C. Okay, to start off with, you can see we have a common denominator for each one of these. And, and if I rearrange each one of these three individual equations in terms of Ra plus Rb plus Rc, I can see that that expression is equal to Ra, Rb over Rd. And it's also equal to Ra, Rc over Re. And it's also equal to Rb, Rc over Rf. So what I'm going to do next is take these two expressions and come up with a term for Ra in terms of B, C, D, and E. And then these two expressions and come up with an expression for Rb in terms of R, C, D, and F. I'm going to plug those back into here for the Ra's and Rb's here. Do a bunch more algebra to come up with an expression for Rc that will only be in terms of Rd, Re, and Rf. And then that will give me the first piece of the puzzle for, for doing this y to delta configuration. Okay, so we have Ra, Rb over Rd is equal to Ra, Rc over Re. Uh, I'm going to solve for Rb. So I get Rb is equal to Ra, Rc over Re times Rd over Ra. Those Ra's cancel, and we have an expression for Rb that's simply in terms of Rc, Rd, and Re. And then similarly, I'll take those two expressions and solve for Ra, Rb. Actually, I'm going to solve for Ra. R a now is equal to R b R c over R f times bring R d over there. Bring this R a down or this R b down here. Those R b's cancel, and we have R a is equal to R c R d over R f. So now I have an RB in terms of CD and E and an RA in terms of CD and F. And so if I take those and I put them into this expression, then I'll have an expression with just C, D, E, and F, and I can solve for C, and, and then I'll have that first, first step. So RB in there and there, and this Ra for there and there. Next step, I'm going to it, multiply these two together, but then I'm also going to take out the Rc from, from these terms. So I get Rc squared, Rd squared, 
over R E R F all over R C R D over R F plus R D over R E plus one. Okay, now that RC will cancel one of these RCs. And now I'm going to try to make a common denominator for these terms. So what I can do is if I multiply by RF over, or RE over RE, and this one I'll multiply RF over RF, so that makes the denominators there the same. And then if I have R E R F over R E R F. That's also equal to one, just like that is. Um, I think I missed something when I copied this down. That should be over R E R F. Oh, and now look, every single term in this in this part of the in this expression has an R E R F in it. So I can actually just get rid of all those. So these R E R Fs will all cancel with this RERF. So those are all go away. And I have, what am I down to now? RD, RD is equal to RC RD squared, using lowercase, over RD RE plus RD RF plus RERF. Now, I am trying to solve for RC, so I, I want to isolate RC. So I isolate RC, then what I'm going to get is if I divide by RD squared on both sides of the equation, I'll get rid of that, and I'll have 1 over RD on this side. So I'll have 1 RD left over for the denominator. And then these will go all go to the numerator. So I've got R D R E plus R D R F plus R E R F. And that's my equation for R C. I mean it was a lot of algebra, but but I got there. And that that is a, that's just one of the pieces. I would need to go through the same thing for R A and R B. I'm not going to do that in this video. It's, it's, it's pretty much the exact same type of thing, exact same steps, just with slightly different, well, slight, a, a different result. Um, I, but I will write out what those results are right now. And these equations are all you need to know to do this y to delta conversion. As long as you know your RD, your RE, and your RF values, you can figure out your RA, RB, and RC values. Now, you may need to know off the top of your head these expressions. And to help you remember them, you can note that the numerators are all the same for, all, for RA, RB, and RC. It's the denominator that's different. And the way that you can remember which denominator to use or which, which of R, E, R, F, and RD to use, take a look at what it is you're trying to figure out. So like, look at RA. What is the node that's across from RA in the delta configuration? In this case, it's Z. Now, if we go over to the Z in the Y configuration, we can see that RF is the resistor that's connected to Z. And it's RF that we use in the, numerator, in the denominator. Can look at the same thing for RE, for RB. RB is here, Y is the node that's across from it, RE is what's connected to Y. And we can do that same thing for RC to see that, that RD is what's in the numerator. So if you just remember that rule, you don't have to remember whether it's RF, RE, or RD that's in the denominator. So now go forth and do your Y to delta conversions like the electrical wizards that you are. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.